Hey, welcome back. So today I thought I'd do something a little bit different and kind of talk about some of the music news that has been uh, going on this week. And if you're looking for a channel that offers uh, some music content, uh, please consider on hitting the subscribe button. Starting off with the first news that happened earlier this week, uh, there is a country artist going by the name of Oliver Anthony. Uh, he just who just blew up out of nowhere. Uh, he he released a song called Richmond North of Richmond. Took a listen to it earlier this week, and it is a great song. You know, I was pretty surprised because I'm not a huge uh, country kind of guy. Uh, but his guitar playing, his lyrics, and his choice of melody in this song, it is a great song. So I highly recommend you guys to check it out. So uh, he pretty much dropped this video. Uh, Let's see, August 8th? So what about, like, longer than a week ago? Whoops. Yeah, that's a little over a week ago. And his video already got over 18.5 million views, which is insane. So if you guys have never heard of his song and you're looking for something new, and even if you're, even if you're not a big uh, country kind of person, I definitely recommend you guys go check him out. So he dropped his video and, and then he released his song to all streaming platform. And what's crazy is over the course of a week, he already beat some of the top artists on the top billboard, such as uh, Taylor Swift. So uh, y'all go check him out. I highly recommend you to check it out, but uh, don't, don't click off this video just yet. And the next story, the killers apologize for bringing a Russian fan on stage during the Georgia concerts. For some reason, they have to apologize because of the whole Russian and the Ukraine stuff, uh, which is, I think is stupid, in my opinion, because uh, you can't just blame the citizen for what their country is doing, you know? So that's kind of my political take. Uh, I don't think they had any reason to apologize, but that's just my opinion. The Killers uh, performed at the Black Sea Arena in the former Soviet state. Uh, frontman Brandon Flowers invited a Russian man to play the drums on their songs for reasons unknown, prompting the boos and walkouts, and walkouts from members of the audience. Uh, the group later took to social media to apologize for offending anyone by urging the crowd to treat the Russian fans as their brother. Their quote, uh, they said, the good people of Georgia, it was never our intention to offend anyone. They began, quote, uh, we have long-standing tradition of inviting people to play drums, and it seemed from the stage that the initial response from the crowd indicated that they were okay with tonight's audience participation member coming up on stage with us. We recognize that a comment meant to suggest that all of the killer's audience and fans are brothers and sisters could be misconstrued. We did not mean to upset anyone, and we apologize. We stand with you and hope to return soon." End quote. So a little bit, I, I don't see how, how it could be a controversy, uh, in my opinion, uh, because again, you know, like the citizen, a uh, citizen of a country should not be uh, I don't know, hated against or whatever for whatever the the uh, country is doing. Same way, uh, same way, like Americans shouldn't be judged for what the uh, politicians decide to do. You know. So moving on to the next story, Dungeon Roses has just dropped a new song called Perhaps. So the song, which was originally written as part of the Chinese Democracy Session, was supposed to have arrived last Friday, August 11th, but came instead a few days late after it was leaked on touch-tune machines. The arrival of Perhaps comes after many rumors that Axel Rose and company were working on new music which started after the tune was used during a live sound check at a June gig. Uh, let's see. Following that, Rose and Slash were photographed in the studio listening to new mixes and the band's longtime stage text said that fans could expect new music any day now. And while this isn't exactly a brand new song, it's still nice to hear something from Guns N' Roses after it's been more than a year since they dropped Hard School and Absurd. 
oh dang, I didn't even know they came out new music. I'm going to have to check those songs out. Maybe do a reaction video or something. I think that would be pretty cool. So, on to the next news. Jerry Moss dead at 88. Jerry's death was announced on Wednesday by his family in a statement issued to the Associated Press. Quote, they don't truly make them like him anymore. We will miss conversations with him about everything under the sun, read the statement. The twinkles in his eyes as he approached every moment ready for the next adventure, end quote. He's known as the Music Mogul, Mogul? Yeah, the Music Mogul, otherwise known as M, in the seminal A&M record. Co-founded the music label in 1962 with trumpeter and band leader uh, Herb Albert, or Alpert, my bad, Herb Alpert. Uh, the label was home to many best-selling acts of the rock era, such as The Police, Cat Stevens, The Carpenters, Joe, Joe Cocker, Six, uh, stick or stick, stick, and uh, Peter Frampton. Uh, from the 70s to the 80s, Jerry reported helped reshape A&M's roster to incorporate the modern R&B of Janet Jackson and grunge bands, including Soundgarden. So yeah, unfortunately, he passed away at age 88. So rest in peace. Both Jerry and Herb was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2006. That is pretty cool. So unfortunately, he, he passed away at 88, lived a full life, so that is great. Uh, he survived, he is survived by his second wife, Tina Morse, and his three children. Uh, and on to our next news, I selected this one because uh, it involves Pliny. So I want to read through it with you guys. And so, a uh, headliner goes like, uh, Pliny explained why he hadn't practiced seriously for a long time. Answers if knowing music theory is necessary. So, uh, in this interview, Pliny said, I haven't practiced seriously for a very long time because I don't enjoy it that much. But when I am writing music, I'll try to do something that I haven't done before. Then, as I'm trying to record it, I'll spend hours or days or however long it takes to build up that certain technique. And then, when we're doing a tour, I'll practice a lot, just playing the song before the tour, but it's rare that I'll sit down and practice a scale or something like that because I just get bored. I completely get that. So, down there, he says, he asks, is music important, or is music improv, is music theory important for improv? He says, I find it useful to have a basic understanding just because if I'm writing something and I know what scale or key a certain part is in, it may be faster to write the other parts. But overall, I try to make everything sound good and it doesn't really matter why it sounds good or what scale it is in. Uh, going deeper into the subject of having solid understanding of scales, Pliny said, it's, great, it's a great starting point, but it also might lead you into the trap of playing the same things over and over again because they're comfortable, which I would say isn't like real improvisation. But I guess the more you know, the more you can choose what you want to incorporate. So yeah, those are the news uh, from this week. So if you guys enjoyed this video and you want to see me do uh, sort of like a weekly dive into some of the music news that happened throughout the week, uh, please let me know by leaving a comment, hitting the thumbs up button, and subscribe if you want to see more of this video. Alright, so I think I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video.